experiencing God, unit one, day one, God's will in your life. Pray and ask God to identify one or more statements or scriptures He wants you to understand, learn, or practice. The Bible verse for the week is from John 15, 5. I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. Testimony. When the World Sphere was coming to Vancouver, an association of churches believed God wanted them to reach the 22,000 people who would be coming through their city. This far exceeded their budget. They prayed, trusted, and believed God to provide the needed finances. God allowed them to be the catalyst to see almost 20,000 people accept Jesus Christ. Remember, as we follow Jesus, He keeps us in the center of God's will. Cultivating an intimate love relationship with God requires spending time with Him, prayer, meditation, Bible study, and personal application. Remember, the Holy Spirit is our personal teacher and He guides us into all truth. Jesus is our roadmap. He is the only way, plus he's the only one who knows the way. Abraham obeyed God and set out to the promised land. No details were provided, yet Abraham packed up and headed out. Abraham followed by faith in the one who called him. A lot of times God calls us to obey him without instructions. He gives us assignments without details. We are asked to believe, obey, and step out in faith. Some of the scriptures this, for today were 1 Corinthians 2.14, Man Without Spirit, John 14.26, The Counselor, John 14.6, Jesus Being the Way, the Truth, the Life, and Matthew 6.33-34, through 34, Seeking God's Kingdom. What does God want you to do in response to today's study? Blessings to you. Experiencing God, Unit 1, Day 2. Jesus is your model. Bible verse, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. Always go to the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth when making decisions and evaluating experiences. The Bible, not our experiences, is our guide to how to relate to God and how to live. Stay close to God for His daily guidance. For Moses and the children of Israel, God led them through a cloud by day and fire by night. For the disciples, He basically said, follow me and I will show you. We are given the Holy Spirit. What is God proposing to accomplish in our lives? What is His will? We must adjust our life to Him and His will. The focus needs to be on God and not on our life. John 5, 17, 19 through 20 reminds us that Jesus watched to see where His Father was at work and joined Him. His Father was always working and He did what He saw His Father do. God is always working around us. So we must always be watching to see where God is working and we must be willing to join Him. Some of today's scriptures were Malachi 3, 6, I, the Lord, do not change, and John 5, 17, 19 through 20. Again, the question is, what does God want you to do in response to today's study? blessings and have a great day. Experiencing God, Unit 1, Day 3, Learning to be a Servant of God. Bible verse, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. A servant is one who finds out what his master wants him to do and then does it. Jesus came as a servant to accomplish God's will to redeem humanity. As a servant of God, we must be moldable. Servanthood requires obedience. We must be responsive to and remain in the potter's hand to operate according to his design. The example given was that of a potter in the clay in Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6. The pot being shaped was marred, so the potter formed it into another pot. 
God takes our life where He wills and works through it to accomplish His purposes. A relationship where we relate to God, respond to Him, and adjust our life to Him yields us to become instruments for Him to do what He wants through our life. The prophet Elijah challenged the prophets of Baal to prove once and for all whose God was the true God. He took a big risk. God won. A relationship with God must come first. We must get to know Him, adjust our life to Him, let Him love us, and allow Him to reveal Himself through us to a watching world. God wants us to come into a greater knowledge of Him by experience, develop a growing, deepening love relationship, involve us in His kingdom purposes to accomplish His will through us. Ask yourself, what is on the Master's heart? Discover where He is working, working and meet Him there. Scriptures for today were Philippians 2, 5 through 8. Jesus humbling himself, Jeremiah 18, 1 through 6, the potter and the clay, 1 Kings 18, 15 through 39, Elijah's challenge, John 12, 26, serving God. Today's study closes with a testimony of a declining church who decided to study experience God before closing their doors through a request to provide activities for kids in an apartment block, God revitalized the church. The realization was God had been working in their community all along. They just needed to get involved. What does God want you to do in response to today's study? Shalom, shalom. Experiencing God, Unit 1, Day 4, God Works Through His Servants, Part 1. Bible verse, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. The seven realities of experiencing God. 1. God is always working around us. 2. God pursues a real and personal continuing love relationship with us. 3. God extends an invitation to become involved with Him in His work. 4. God speaks by the Holy Spirit through the Bible, prayer, circumstances, and the church to reveal himself, his purposes, and his ways. Five, his invitation always leads to a crisis of belief that requires faith and action. Six, we must make major adjustments in our life to join God in what he is doing. Seven, knowing God by experience comes as we obey him and he accomplishes his work through us. The example cited was that of Moses. God heard the cry of the Israelites and God pursued Moses. See Exodus 24, 12, 15 through 16 and 18 about the burning bush and Moses being on the mountaintop for 40 days and nights. God invited Moses to become involved with him in freeing the Israelites from Egyptian slavery. Whenever God prepares to do something, He reveals to a person or His people what He is going to do. The scriptures for this week were Amos 3-7, where God reveals His plans, Exodus 2-4, in regard to Moses, Exodus 33, 7-34-10, Numbers 12, 6-8, I love relationship with Moses. What does God want you to do in response to today's? study. Shalom, shalom. Experiencing God, Unit 1, Day 5. God works through His servants, Part 2. Bible verse, I am the vine, you are the branches. If a man remains in me and I in him, he will bear much fruit. Apart from me, you can do nothing. John 15, 5. Reality 4, God spoke to Moses face to face to reveal himself, his purposes, and his ways. Numbers 12, 6 through 8. Reality 5. God's invitation for Moses to work with him led to a crisis of belief that required faith and action. Moses came up with so many excuses because he was looking to himself and not to God. Reality 6. Moses had to make major adjustments in his life to join God in the assignment he had for him. This required faith and action. 
Exodus 4, 19 through 20. Reality 7, Moses came to know God by experience as he obeyed him. God accomplished his work through Moses as he revealed his nature and purpose. God accomplished what Moses could not do on his own strength. Exodus 14, 15 through 31. As a servant, Moses was moldable and remained at God's disposal to be used as God chose. Every step of obedience brought Moses and Israel to a greater knowledge of God. Exodus 6, 1 through 8. D.L. Moody, an ordinary man who sought to be fully and wholly consecrated to Christ, became one of the greatest evangelists of modern time. Imagine what one ordinary Christian in the hand of Almighty God can do anything God commands. God's revelation becomes his invitation. When God does a God-sized work through your life, you will be humbled before him. The people in scripture were ordinary. Their relationships with God and the activity of God made them extraordinary. When you believe nothing significant can happen through you, you have said more about your belief in God than you have declared about yourself. If you feel weak, limited, and ordinary, you are the best material through which God works. Paul said God deliberately seeks, seeks the weak things and the despised things because from them he receives the greatest glory. 1 Corinthians 1, 26-31 What does God want you to do in response to today's study? Shalom, shalom. Experiencing God, week one. God is the vine and we are the branches. We have to be plugged into Him in order for us to bear good fruit. As without Him, we can do nothing. Thank you, Father, for your Holy Spirit who leads us into all truth. As we follow Jesus, the only one who is and the only one who knows the way, He keeps us in the center of God's will. Learn and will to spend time with God through prayer, meditation, Bible study, personal application of his word and fellowship with other believers. Always go to the Bible and ask the Holy Spirit to reveal the truth when making decisions and evaluating experiences. Remember, a servant is one who finds out what his master wants to do and then does that. As a servant of God, we must be moldable. Servanthood requires obedience. We must be responsive to and remain in the potter's hand to operate according to his design, not ours. Whenever God prepares to do something, he reveals to a person or his people what he is going to do. God's revelation then becomes his invitation. God is always working around us, pursues a real and personal continuing love relationship with us, extends an invitation to become involved with him in his work. He speaks by the Holy Spirit, through the Bible, prayer, circumstances, and the church to reveal himself, his purposes, and his ways. His invitation always leads to a crisis of belief that requires faith and action, which requires us to make major adjustments in our life to join God in what he is doing. Knowing God by experience comes as we obey him, and he accomplishes his work through us. God invites us to know Him and His Son, so let us purpose to daily seek Him with our whole heart, to be connected to Him and become aware of our surroundings. He continuously reveals Himself to us to make known the plans He has for us to get involved in kingdom work. I'm reminded that nothing, absolutely nothing is impossible with God. As we pursue Him and strive to be more like Him, may we draw strength from knowing the Holy Spirit is guiding us. God is always working around us. Watch to see where God is working and join Him. Speak, Lord, for your servant is listening. 1 Samuel 3.9